The Top Not Creative Show, The Top Not Creative Show, Seeking Super Smart, Super Talented Superheroes, How to Be Wow, All of the World and All Around, The Top Not Creative Show, The Top Not Creative Show. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This is Shante Schrader and this is a show where we seek out the super smart, the super talented, and basically the superheroes who are taking over the world and making it super wow. Today we are talking with Erin Hornstein, owner of Plum Sage Flowers. She's located in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we're going to find out a lot more about Erin, but she started out as working in flower shops in Boulder and Chicago and an organic farm in Boulder, which sounds really, really cool, and her friends and family uh, demanded more from her and told her, launch your own shop. <laughs> um, it may not have gone exactly like that, but we'll find out. And that's when Plum Sage Flowers um, hit, hit the books, which was the spring of 2005. And within a couple years, Plum Sage was chosen as Best of Colorado Wedding Florist by The Knot dot com brides and again in 2009 2010 2011 2012 2013 uh, and we're going to assume 2014 and beyond uh, plum sage is also recognized as one of denver's best wedding florists by channel 7's a-list in 2008 2009 2010 2011 and awarded the bride's choice award by wedding wire in 2010 2011 2012 2013 Plum Sage has been a member of Style Me Pretty's Little Black Book since 2010 and is a Couture Colorado List member. And we are going to find out all about this beautiful good stuff from Erin. So without further ado, Erin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Did I say your last name correctly? It's Hornstein. Hornstein. It's always the, the opposite. It was much worse. People butchered that. Ten times worse, so. <laughs> Hornstein, Hornstein, it's fine. Hornstein, you just answer to whatever sounds. You just hear the, the H sound, right? And you're just, that's me, that's me. Erin, thank you for joining us. Now let's just jump right in. Um, tell us about your area of expertise, kind of how you got coursed into starting your own um, design studio, floor design studio, and uh, what, you know, what kind of got you started on this path? Well, I obviously had a lot of experience in various shops. Um, in my undergrad, I always had part-time jobs in addition to school, and so I worked in various various places as I went through my um, school career, my first career, and I was actually working on um, an amazing organic farm outside of Boulder, and I, I still am friends with the owner, Lyle, and I still buy as much product from as, as I can, but we had some women approach us at the farmer's market and ask, if um, basically we could reproduce the bouquets that were there, which I was designing at the time, and take them to Telluride for their wedding. And he kind of looked at me and laughed and said, you're on your own for this one. <laughs> and so I bought as much as I could fit in my little Jetta at the time and drove it to Telluride and put together these you know, really beautiful arrangements for this bride. And it was a success, and it was it was fun. It was a gorgeous place. It was a gorgeous wedding. And so... She referred me to her friends, and then her friends referred me to her friends, and so that's kind of how it started. It literally started by accident, and um, in the initial years, just grew, um, pardon the pun, but organically. I mean, it was by word of mouth, and um, until I got the recognition from The Knot and started advertising on their site, um, it really was kind of, I was working out of my home, doing it on the side while I was concentrating on my, you know, real job and my career. Um, and so as the years passed, I eventually gave up on the medical career and had a full fledge into this. And now I have a really great crew of women that help me out and then, um, and we have a design studio in the Lower Highlands. Um, and so the, the weddings have kind of manifested themselves. I mean, I've done so many over the years that we're now, we still are primarily referral based, but now people can find us on places like Style Me Pretty or Couture Colorado. Um, and then we do do special orders now, but we don't advertise for that sort of thing. So, again, that's just someone who's worked with us will call us for a birthday or an anniversary, and then we can produce something spectacular for them. But we do specialize pretty much on the weddings and the events, and we are dabbling a little bit into corporate work now, um, which is nice to fill in a Tuesday and a Wednesday, you know, throughout the week. So, 
Oh, and yeah, all those weekends, I'm sure, add up over time. <laughs> yes, we will end up doing probably between, we, we have over 75 booked for the season already. So I'm imagining we'll probably do close between 90 and 100 this year. Oh, um, my goodness. That's, that's fantastic. Um, now, tell me about your style. So our style is very much catered to the specific client's taste and um, budget. You know, I always have to keep in consideration as well. Um, I think naturally our style tends to be a little bit more natural. Um, we're kind of the English garden, lush, lots of textures, lots of different um, foliages, but used on purpose, not just to fill space. Um, but at the same time, we're a little bit more relaxed than kind of the formal English garden style. So I, I would say that we definitely have more of our own Colorado organic style going on. But that said, we can also do modern, we can do traditional, um, you name it. I mean, we are always adapting, you know, our techniques to whatever the bride or client wants, um, color palette, flower types, design aesthetics, and so on. Now, are they primarily in the Colorado, Denver, Colorado area? Yes, we travel statewide, um, but I have done a few events out of state and out of the country. And I'm always looking to do more for the right person. Um, but primarily, we load up our vans and we'll go as far as Steamboat, as far as Telluride. But I'd say probably 90% of our weddings are between Denver and the Front Range and then Summit County and Grand County. So we are up in Vail and Beaver Creek and Winter Park pretty often because there's some gorgeous venues up there. So, But we stick primarily to Colorado. Yes. And that's what I'm learning is that Denver is actually um, a destination place for a lot of a lot of um, brides. It is. There's some um, incredibly gorgeous mountain venues, and there's also some really beautiful venues here in downtown. Um, so we have a lot of girls that contact us from afar and plan a wedding as ultimately a vacation for themselves and for their guests. Oh, that sounds spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Now, um, you have a team, so tell me more about your team and when you brought them on and what they, they kind of, how they work with you. Sure. Well, aside from myself, um, Jenny and Caitlin, um, the two ladies that are kind of my right-hand gals, they also take clients and take weddings. So whoever initially meets with a client is that person's contact through the whole planning process. And then when we all sit down to the design table, that's the person who's ultimately telling the rest of us what to do and how to do it. Um, so it works out really well. So so um, each of us, you know, takes clients. They'll be, I have probably, I'm going to guess, about 30 this year. Caitlin is actually taking the majority. She joined me in the fall, which is um, amazing because it's giving me a little bit of better work-life balance. And then Jenny will probably take, I'd say, close to two dozen. Um, so Jenny's been with me from the beginning. She worked in her undergrad in shops in Durango. Um, and then here in Denver, she actually has an industrial design background as well as a gardening background. So she's kind of my go-to when it comes to building things or figuring out mechanically how we can build an eight foot by six foot cross that can stand on the top of Beaver Creek Mountain and not blow over. <laughs> <laughs> so th that's Jenny's specialty, but she has an amazing aesthetic and just a really, um, low-key kind personality that really clicks well with clients and then Caitlin actually joined me just last fall she was managing um, a high-end retail and event florist up in um, the Vale Eagle um, area and she approached me looking for kind of a change and um, so I brought her on as a studio manager so she is kind of taking over a taking some things off my shoulders um, which is wonderful so she's been just fantastic and she has again just a great design aesthetic um, she's a really talented designer she's younger has a ton of energy and she has an amazing hospitality background she worked um, for a number of different high-end companies in some um, up in the Vale region so she kind of is bred to have this amazing customer service which is a priority for us um, and then aside from those two ladies, we have a wonderful handful of contract employees that help us on a weekly basis um, and then on weekends as needed. So um, not to leave anyone out or hurt anyone's feelings, but I won't go through each of their personalities. But um, we definitely demand that people are very detail-oriented, very professional, um, very fun to be around, um, and obviously treat our clients like gold. So 
So I have a good crew. And then there's the dogs. We have Hudson the Lab, who's always here. And Caitlin has a puppy named Spirit, who's always in the studio. So we're a very dog-friendly studio. Well, that's very necessary. I'm sure that they they <laughs> play, play key roles in, in happiness factor. <laughs> they are our mascots. And they are often just, we have a little courtyard in front of the studio. And they often just sit there in the sun on their beds and greet people as they walk by. So they have very important roles. They're probably brainstorming, you know, creative juices as they're, they're sunbathing. Oh, you know, Hudson's eight years old, and I have always said if he had thumbs, he knows more about flowers than any dog. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could put him to work. Exactly. Right now. <laughs> I, I am at work, you know. I, I'm working hard. Um, so you are, you're considered a green company, um, and you okay. buy local products. So tell us more about the decision and, and kind of what that means. Sure. Well, most people don't, um, it's not on their radar, you know, where flowers come from or how far they have to travel to get um, to the stores. You know, most of the consumers will walk by them at a grocery store um, or, you know, on the special occasion, order them online and not really think about where they come from, how far they you know, how, how far they travel, how many vehicles it requires to get them to where they need to be. So the biggest producers of flowers are in Europe and um, South America, and, you know, there are vans that are required to get these from the farms to the airports, and then there's a lot of fuel that's required to fly them all across the world. And so to really source local product, I mean, it's a no-brainer in terms of these flowers aren't out of water for a week before they get to where they're going. Um, just from the health of the product, but also just the impact on the environment. And so um, by sourcing local blooms, you're just eliminating, you know, the middleman and you're supporting local farms, which is obviously important. And then you're just, you know, obviously have providing your clients with really pretty fresh product. So the farm that I worked for um, produces blooms and we visit his, um, his little booths at several farmers markets during the week, during the summer months. So we'll stop in and buy from him what we can. And we do actually go there every Wednesday morning in the summer before we go to our wholesalers. So we're trying to buy as much as we can from the small man. Um, and it's gorgeous stuff, don't get me wrong. And he gives me great prices, which doesn't hurt either. <laughs> um, but we stop there, and then we'll head to our wholesalers. And there's about three or four choices in Denver in terms of big warehouses where flowers are imported and we buy from. Um, and one of them does grow a lot of their stuff in greenhouses. Um, I say a lot, it's, you know, you're probably talking about five varieties versus maybe 30 that they have in the cooler, but still, we'll take it. So we do try to support them as much as we can. Um, and then obviously the um, our last choice is having things brought in. Um, I do have one relationship with a rose grower in Ecuador. That's fantastic. And so I email him and I put, you know, and this is for larger quantities such as Valentine's Day or we're going to order 400 roses for them for Mother's Day. Um, and they just drop ship them directly to our door. So, you know, that still is a little bit of, of a carbon footprint, but at least it's coming straight from him and we're not going through another middleman. So. I know that's excellent. And you're right. Um, most of us would not know to put those details together. So, um, I would definitely appreciate that if you were doing a big event for me to consider that for me. <laughs> and we have guys that specifically want locally grown organic product, which we love. Um, we always tell them, you know, it's not as specific as we can be with other brides where we're following a perfect color palette and flower selection. Um, oftentimes those brides will allow us the flexibility, you know, to say as long as it's within this range and this style, you can use whatever you want. And that's such a delightful client to me, honestly. Last year we had a cut we had two different girls. Um, so I'd like to say it's really often, but not all brides are okay with that much, you know, freedom in terms of what their aesthetics are gonna be on their wedding day. But for one of them, I actually drove to a, a Dahlia farm in Colorado and took a bucket and took my son and we just went out and picked one afternoon and, you know, gave the farmer, um, wrote him a check and came in and she had the most incredible flowers because she gave us that flexibility to be resourceful, be local, and use what I thought looked best. Um, and they were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, Well, I think that's a good tip to give to brides-to-be who were listening. Um, what other tips would you say are, would, would be awesome? 
Well, I think when you trust your vendors, um, I think amazing things can happen. So we specialize in weddings. We obviously have done many, many, many over the years. Um, and I do love the availability of visuals on Pinterest now, on um, wedding blogs. You know, there's so much information out there, which is just awesome if you're planning a wedding. There's so many ideas, but sometimes the ladies will bring us those ideas and it kind of has to stop there. You know, this is what they want, um, which is wonderful because usually it's very pretty. But if I were to suggest something, I would say let us take it a step further or trust your vendors to you know be able to do what we do best um you know there's nothing better than someone saying this is what you do i don't do this tell me what you think or tell me what you like and so i think that's um i think that's fantastic i i agree that would because mostly we don't know what we don't know (laughs) (laughs) and the surprise would be like oh okay I'm glad you did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell us, where where do you think Plum Sage um, is going to go from here? Do you have plans for world domination or? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, no. No, in fact, I've had so many people, it's not as common anymore, but so many people that have been so confused at my, at, at my business model because we don't do retail, because we don't have the walk-in space where you can buy candles and accessories and um and you know granted i definitely have a good idea in my brain if i were to do that what type of shop it would be um but i think plum sage is going to continue to do exactly what we're doing we're going to create really really beautiful custom flowers for events one event at a time um and in terms of growing bigger um the trend in the last couple of years is that we are doing larger events bigger scale um Big, I mean, bigger budgets, more elaborate decor, but that means we'll do less if we're doing larger. Mm-hmm. So I certainly do not want to ever turn into a chain or a factory. Um, it's still very personalized. It's still very custom, and, um, you know, we like to know our brides, know our clientele, and continue to have that referral base really be our bread and butter. And in order to be a referral-based business, you have to have some, you know, it has to be a very personal experience, in my opinion. So, Well, let's talk about that for a second. Um, how do you, you know, what are the first things when you you meet with a bride-to-be that, that you look for to, to kind of hone that in so it is very personal for her? We have um, a process, believe it or not. <laughs> so when you contact us um, via the phone call or be it on our website, we immediately send you, um, it is a form document, I'm not going to lie, just because of the sheer number of inquiries that we get, which is amazing, but we'll send you a letter that tells you, um, introduces us and our process. We send you a business policy that describes how we operate and what you can expect from the logistics end, and then we send a list of questions, um, and in that questionnaire is just, you know, numbers, colors, um, obviously your wedding date, your venue. And then it kind of gets a little bit more detailed in terms of what the bride might already have in mind. For centerpieces, we welcome them to send us their Pinterest link or any sort of images that will help us. So this all happens via email before someone even walks in our door. And now each of us um, that sits down for a wedding will sit down for about an hour before we meet with the bride and we will pull ideas. Um, We'll start based on their Pinterest board, based on their answers, we'll start gathering information. Now, when they come into the studio, um, and our studio is very, very comfortable. Again, the dogs are here. They're offered wine. We usually have chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) They sit in kind of a couch, living room type experience, and then we project um, from our MacBooks onto a flat screen the ideas that we've already organized and and their information, including, you know, venue, time, location, number of bridesmaids, all the, you know, kind of logistics. We already have that in our order form that's plugged in. So then we just basically have a conversation about all the different areas um and it it that takes about an hour sometimes an hour and a half or two hours depending upon how much chit chat goes on um and then we'll sit down after that conversation and put together a custom proposal including visuals and descriptions and pricing um so you know there may be two or three meetings that are follow-ups after that or we might do a mock-up which is like a example centerpiece for someone at a certain um budget point 
um, but really just the whole, in terms of being very custom and very personal, you know, we try to get as much information as possible in order to match what we're creating to their day, their style, um, what they imagine, and of course what their budget is. So how far in advance would you suggest um, they, they approach you? You know, for, for popular months like June and September in Colorado, um, I would suggest a year or definitely, definitely, um, you know, eight or nine months out. Um, we are still getting inquiries for this summer, and it's nice if there are some quieter weekends. Um, we can fill in here and there, but I would say that, you know, we had probably 40 weddings booked before, maybe even more, before we even entered into 2013. Oh, my. <laughs> That's incredible. So we, we do, you know, we do limit. So we'll do, we will do two in a day, um, you know, or we may even do three if one of them is a pickup order. We have a, a price point that you have to meet before we'll do full service delivery. And the reason why we have that is just so we can concentrate on a fewer number of events and um, do a really great job for a fewer number of clients versus doing, you know, seven events in a day, mm -hmm. which I've done in the past. And it worked, but it's just not exactly what we're aiming for. Um, again, we're not a factory. We're, it's an art form. So, um, so I mean, the sooner the better. We, we're getting calls for 2014, and I can completely understand. You know, some girls are a little shy at first and say, you must think I'm crazy. I'm like, I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> I think you're more organized than most. <laughs> but definitely not crazy. <laughs> Well, I love it. I love that there is very, you know, there's a process um, that, you know, people know. It, it builds confidence, I'm sure, as they they kind of work along that, which is... Oh, most people love it. Some yeah. girls look at us like, how can you possibly ask me one more question related to flowers? I have not <laughs> thought about this that hard. It's just flowers. And we get it, and we laugh, and we laugh at ourselves. We like, we know it. We know that we ask more detailed questions that you could possibly think of, but um, but it works. You know, we've never had a girl say on her wedding day, oh my gosh, this isn't what I expected. I mean, that's my worst nightmare. So we definitely get them excited and, and um, you know, there's all sorts of personalities with, with brides and grooms and um, we seem to find that happy medium. You know, there's a sliding scale of how much information they want or how hands-on they want to be. Some of them tell us percentages of color I want to see. 7% green and 20% red and um, and that's fine. And then we've got girls, you know, which I mentioned earlier, that say, do what you want. It doesn't matter to us where you're at on that sliding scale. We usually just make it work depending upon where you need to be. So That's incredible. Now, if um, someone does want to get in touch with you uh, for 2014, who that, well, they can try for 2013, <laughs> but um, 2014 and beyond, what is the best way to find you? Um, you can call us directly at the studio, which is 720-328-2190, or you can visit our website, which is plumsageflowers.com, and go to our contact page, and it just opens up um, a form doc that you can send to us, and that'll come directly to me. And we uh, will have all the links, all your contact on the website. I encourage everyone to go see plumsageflowers.com. It's a beautiful website. It's super adorable um, you have galleries and all sorts of good visual eye candy so definitely visit that um erin um i could keep asking you questions for hours and hours but you do have a a very busy schedule so <laughs> um thank you so much for for joining me today for being on the show I, well, I love, me. yeah i love talking to you um and Everyone, definitely go visit the links. Um, make sure that you check everything out. Um, we got some good information today from Erin, and we really we appreciate those insights. I definitely wrote a couple notes down. So um, thank you again. And to our audience, thank you for listening. Now get out there and build something beautiful. Until next time, take care.